Lori Lineberry here with your Spot of God for the week. This week we're going to talk about love. We're going to talk about 1 Corinthians 13, which was the subject of uh, Pastor Gary's sermon this last Saturday and Sunday. And so we're going to dig a little deeper into 1 Corinthians 13 and what is this love thing that is talked about in weddings where we think, oh, that's sweet. This husband and wife are going to do all these wonderful things for each other. But here's what scripture says about love. So John 13, 35 says, it's the, it's the disciples talking to Jesus. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. It is love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. That's what Jesus said to his disciples. So I know we have the Ten Commandments, but Jesus said, here's the thing. It's love now. And what does love constitute? Well, love is different than just an emotional response to things. It's, about, it's like a state of being. So um, 1 Corinthians 13 is widely known um, to answer this question. It is an existence that is permeated and guided with the following. So I took 1 Corinthians 13 and they have a lot of it's not, it's not. Well, I turned those into the positive word. So here's the list of what 1 Corinthians 13 says that love is. It is guided with patience, kindness, honor, trust, truthfulness, protection, hopefulness, perseverance, humbleness, humility, goodwill, selflessness, and calmness. Love forgets past wrongs in all situations, in all interactions, and in all decisions all the time. Can you imagine approaching every situation in life with this cloud of attributes surrounding you and guiding you in your thoughts and your words and your actions? Imagine the world if everyone sought truth and goodness and righteousness and fairness in all their interactions with others. We would not need to build up walls to protect ourselves. We would not have to remember all the past bad things associated with this person and their actions. We could actually trust that what they're doing was what was best for all people involved. No one would lose their temper and lash out in words or physically or transactions would be ones of kindness and not distrust. No one would act out of anger and no one would brag or lie about anything else. Hope would always be present. This is truly loving your neighbor. And who's your neighbor? Your neighbor is everyone that's not you. It's not just the people that you know. It's people that you don't like. It's people you don't agree with. It's people that don't look like you. It's people that don't act like you or talk like you or haven't made the same decisions in life that you did, haven't had the same opportunities. Every single person in the world is your neighbor. Yeah. So do you think we can love our neighbors? Do you think we can? God is commanding us to love each other. Let's see how we can grow this state of mind kind of love and positively impact our closest relationships, our church, and the world. Amen.